Hello everyone, my name is Alex Lim and this is Author's Story, where we tell inspiring stories about authors and their books. On this episode, we are happy to have with us Mr. Ken Dunn, who is the author of the book Learn How to Write a Book in Two Hours, and is also the founder of Reader's Legacy, which is a new social media platform for authors and book lovers that is due to be released sometime within the next few days. So Ken, welcome to the show. Oh, thanks a lot. I really appreciate being here. Cool. So, Ken, first off, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background so our listeners can kind of get a feel of uh, where you came from. Well, thanks a lot for asking. Uh, it's, fun. it's kind of funny. My background is not what it should be for somebody who's running a publishing company or a high-tech company in the publishing industry. Uh, I started my adult life as a police officer. Mm-hmm. I spent 15 years in investigative policing, which include taking time to do investigations in homicide and drug investigations and child abuse. Right. And even included uh, five years where I was a major crime interrogator, and I interrogated suspects who committed everything from murders to child abuse investigations. Wow! And uh, you know, back in twenty uh, two thousand, and actually back in two thousand, we found out we were going to become parents, and uh, my wife told me that we were about to have a baby. And I decided I didn't want to be a cop anymore. So a friend of mine, I actually was kind of lost for a little while. I I didn't know what to do with my life. I I really didn't have any education other than grade 12. And I didn't know what to do. So I went to a friend whose dad owned a big insurance company, and I asked him for some advice. You know, what should I do? What do you think my options are? Okay. And he actually gave me a book. He said, I'm not quite sure what I what I could tell you, but I do know that when I first started asking about business, my dad gave me this book. Maybe you should read it. And it was Og Mandino's book, The Greatest Salesman in the World. It's a mm-hmm. classic. It sold over 40 million copies. But back in 2000, I had never heard of it. Right. And so I read it, devoured it, and I realized that the same skills that the author was talking about as being the elite level skills that the greatest salespeople in the world had were the identical skills that I had learned as a police interrogator. So I realized I was a sales guy. So I went back to him and I asked him if he had a suggestion. He said, well, maybe you should open a mortgage company. Uh, And I did. In three years, we funded $300 million in mortgages. I left my job. It changed our lives. Right. And we've never looked back. Right. As you can tell from from this, though, Alvin, I'm a bit of a storyteller. I, I right. been told I know how to captivate people's attention, and and so I started being asked to do trainings on sales. And before right. I knew it, I found myself traveling all over the world, teaching people how I sold things to people. And I, of course, I told whimsical stories of my days in interrogation and getting the big confession and all the rest of it. And perhaps that, you know, it stimulated the audience during my talks. Right. But the fact is, on the heels of all of this talking, I wrote my first book. It was a success. It led to a second book. I had started my own publishing company to be the label on these self-published books. And before I knew it, I had friends asking me for advice. Right. And the rest is history. Cool. Cool. So, Ken, uh, just just wondering, uh, I mean, like, most police officers, most cops, they don't go elsewhere, you know, they don't, like, quit the force and do something else when their first child is born. Um, What exactly is it that kind of drove you to, you know, get out of the force and go into business and entrepreneurship when when your child was born? Yeah, look, I, I didn't want to raise my kids around the negativity that I was involved in. You know, ah. 8, 10, sometimes 15 hours a day thinking of being around the, the worst crimes in the world and the worst people in the world. It inevitably affects your psyche. Right. And, and I wanted to be in a profession where it was positive and enlightening and I could be a good dad. Right, right. Okay. So I suppose uh, you more or less achieved that then, I take it. Yeah, we've had a really blessed life, you know, full fantastic. full of ups and downs, but definitely more good than bad. Fantastic, fantastic. Okay, you mentioned uh, Og Mandino uh, as being, um, you know, one of the first books you read that kind of steered you into entrepreneurship and salesmanship and this kind of thing. Were you a really big book reader uh, prior to, you know, prior to becoming an entrepreneur? Oh, heck no. <laughs> the first book I ever read was a book that my wife gave me just a year or two before and it was called The Wealthy Barber. It was a book written by Canadian author David Chilton. Right. And it was a book for young people about finances. 
Uh-huh. And um, then I didn't read anything else until Augmentino. But since then, uh, I've read well over a thousand business books, and wow. you know, my my personal library is is probably the most coveted possession I have. Wow, a thousand books. That's something. That's something. Oh, yeah, okay. you know, it's it's also why I, I, I came up with the idea of readerslegacy.com. It was inspired by those books and, and the blessings those books have had on my life. Yeah, cool, cool. So uh, we'll get into Reader's Legacy uh, a little bit later, Ken. I'd like to uh, go back a little bit to uh, your latest book, Learn How to Write a Book in Two Hours. How did the idea for this book come about? I mean, like, publishers have been around forever. But I right. don't think any of them have put out a book that provides, you know, the kind of extensive coverage, the kind of extensive treatment about the creative process, writing, marketing, uh, like yours has. Like, where did the idea come from? Well, you know, uh, after eight years in the publishing industry and talking to thousands of authors, I realized that there are thousands of publishing companies in the world, right. and some of them not so successful as ours, perhaps. And there are a lot of people that it, it seems like in this new publishing industry will say whatever they have to say to get a client to work with them. Okay. And so I wanted to write a book where I could, you know, not I don't mean to be a maverick, but I wanted to set the record straight. Okay. I wanted to tell anybody who wanted to read it what I did to sell 250,000 copies of my, of my books okay. and hopefully inspire more people people to read and hopefully if they read the book they would come more armed you know I also looked at it as a great tool for my own company if, if somebody that was a prospect of our company would read the book up front they would have a much better understanding of what they're getting into All right okay so how much of this content is uh, would be from your like your personal experience like I, I mean I read in your uh, in your book that the, your first experience with writing a book was a total mess and mm -hmm. uh, you know, and so I guess you've been through the entire system, so to speak, um, from creative to marketing. So would it be fair to say that you know a lot of this is your personal experience, or did you like get experiences from other people, other authors, and their inputs and stuff like that? Well, I'm really proud to say that I get to work with a team of 27 people today that uh, oh. have decided to be part of this company we're building, and of course, all of their thoughts, ideas, and experiences went into the book. Right. You know, I'm certainly the author on the cover, but uh, it was definitely a cum community experience putting the book together. But it, it definitely does encompass all of my experiences, learnings, and best practices. Wow. Okay, cool. So I take it you don't do, I mean, 100% of the research is not all you. I mean, I, I take it you also got some, uh, asked some people to do some research for you on, on other aspects that you might not have known. Well, everything that's in that book, I wrote. Um, okay. My okay. my team worked with me to review the stuff that I was writing and add ideas and suggest other ways to do it. I have one of the best editors in chief in the oh. whole publishing industry, Simon Pressland, and, and of course he was heavily involved in the book with me. Right. Cool. Okay. So, uh, getting beyond this book, are there other topics which inspire, interest you, and which you'd like to explore as an author, maybe in some future book? Well, you know, so over the last 15 years, uh, I've been blessed to own four different companies mm -hmm. in four completely different industries. Right. And if I were to add up all of the success revenue-wise, uh, we've probably, in our company's produced over $750 million in revenue. Right. And we've made every mistake in business. We've had all the failures in business. We've also right. learned from some of the most amazing business leaders that I've ever met. And along the way, uh, I've been responsible for all of the sales and revenue generation in the businesses. So you can imagine now 15 years of doing this, yeah. I have immense amount of experience in starting companies and growing them. So right. you're going to see after my next book, which is called The Greatest Prospector in the World, it's a parable. It's coming out in the fall. And of course, it's a tribute to Og Mandino's book. Cool. It's a storybook that teaches sales training principles. You're going to start to see a series of business books and startup books come out of my head. Wow. All right. Cool. Well, uh, <laughs> sounds like it's going to be an interesting next few years as an author. It definitely is exciting. All right. Cool. So let's get on back to uh, you mentioned Reader's Legacy. Uh, you're, 
I, I gathered you're presently setting, setting up Reader's Legacy, which I understand is um, a new social media platform which uh, could have a major impact on social media and publishing. Uh, I also understand that you'll be announcing it at the coming upcoming uh, Reader's Legacy Choice Awards in a few days' time. Uh, yeah, that's right. So it, it's really amazing to see that it's happening right now, Alvin. It's a, it's a dream and a vision that's been brewing for five years. Wow, and okay. it's it's a website community that we're launching that over a million dollars has gone into. There are currently nine programmers and architects working on it. Okay. And it is finally launching in nine days, seven hours, and 23 minutes, and 19, 18, 17, 16 seconds. Oh, that is very exact. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah. very exact. <laughs> Correct, yeah. No, look, Alvin, uh, I, it's it's an amazing community. People who love books as much as I do uh, right. are going to be addicted to this this system. I'm so proud of my team for what they've put together. Here's a really quick story. Back in 2011, okay. uh, I was focusing on building two companies, my publishing company and a direct selling company, and reading my books and just loving them. Now, I've been in business with uh, one of my best friends. His name is Rod Larravee. Okay. Uh, for the last seven years. And Rod and I are co-owners of the, the publishing company and of Reader's Legacy. And, you know, Rod and I, just like best friends do, always jab at each other and have right. fun poking at each other. And one of the things he loves to tease me about is the fact that I have never read an ebook. Now, okay. Now, I know that sounds odd, considering that over... 50% of books in the world today that are sold are ebooks, right. and also considering that I own a major publishing company that sold hundreds of thousands of ebooks last year, but but the fact is I'm an old-fashioned reader. I, I need to touch and feel the book. Okay. I, I mean, Alvin, books have had such a dramatic impact on my life. And so back in August of 2011, the publishing industry changed forever. It was the first month that more books were sold online than offline. Okay. And of course, my partner Rod didn't miss the opportunity to throw a jab at me. He sent me an email which contained a link to the New York Times article that announced this epic situation that had happened. Right. And when I was reading the article, he, of course, his comment was, You better start reading ebooks, dummy. But when I was reading the article, it was it was probably one of the most profound experiences in my life, Alvin. I stared at the article. I looked right. at a Kindle that had been sitting on my desk for years, never used, and I looked at my personal library. Now you got to understand, my books mean everything to me. They've shaped my life. When I speak on stages, I talk about them. When people come to my houses, my house, they they sit in front of my library. When I'm having a bad day, I reminisce over a, a previous read. My my library is even in my will. That it has okay. to be preserved after my passing, and I, and and so all at once, I thought to myself, you know what? If all these experts are right, and in ten or fifteen years, most books sold are eBooks, then then there's going to be a tragedy that occurs, and the tragedy is I'm not alone. People who love books covet their personal book collections. They have their libraries all around them. They have books in their home, in their offices. They, they feel the same way about their experiences reading as I do. Right. And I thought, you know what? Nobody has properly figured out how to virtualize that experience. And then, and then Alvin, it just my mind went crazy. I said, what if I built a website where anybody in the world in a social media environment could quickly open up a page – create a profile for themselves okay. and then there was a virtual version of their library there and all they had to do to add their books was to grab their smartphone open the app scan the barcodes of every book they've ever read and right. those books would magically appear on their virtual bookshelves or mm. if they wanted to they could just click the add a book button and the website would access a database of over 20 million books and they could add every book they've ever read and then once they've added it they could open it up and every book in the world has a page that it looks like a social media page it's the author it's an advertorial it's the author's picture the cover of the book a video about the book and thousands of comments for readers who loved the book as much as they did and they can add their comments to it and they can engage with other people that love to read as much as they do and then i thought well, heck, if I'm going to give every book in the world a page and everybody who loves books in the world can build a virtual library, why not give every author in the world a page? Why not give every publisher in the world a page? And why not make it the world's biggest bookstore? Why not make it the world's biggest book club? 
Mm-hmm. And so I started negotiating with publishers and with distributors and found out how Amazon sold all those books. And right. we created it. And so then I said, well, let's make this really special. Let's create a virtual currency. Let's call it Litcoins. And so now anytime anybody opens a page or adds a book or follows an author or shares a link or makes a comment, they get credits. They actually get badges of honor. It's gamified. It's a big game. And when they get badges, they get Litcoin credits. It's a virtual currency that they can accumulate and use to buy real books. Right. And before you knew it, Alvin, this idea was taking on a mind of its own. I, I got a designer friend of mine to make some pictures so I didn't forget my thoughts. And now four years later, we're nine days away from launching it. Ooh, wow. Wow, Ooh. that's fantastic. <laughs> All right, so I, so this is this is like uh, something that's like four, five years, six years in the making. Uh, is that correct? We first had the idea to do it, idea to do it in August of 2011. So right. this August will be four years since we first thought of it. All right. So something new like this, I mean, this is like a totally novel idea. Uh, I'm sure there are bound to be like bumps in the road and uh, troubles and challenges and stuff like that. Uh, was there any point uh, when you were creating Regulus Legacy that you thought, gosh, is this really going to happen? Uh, uh, no. No, it's the opposite of that. What I've learned in my life is that when you have a vision to do something, it needs to consume you. It needs to take over you. And and I have never, ever lost focus on this. Cool, cool. Wow, fantastic. All right. So I gather you really do have – it occurs to me that you really do have a committed, passionate entrepreneur's mindset when it comes to Reader's Legacy. You have to if you want anything to succeed. Right. Cool. Okay. Well, that's a that's a good uh, that's a good lesson for our listeners, just right there. Um, now, with Reader's Legacy, I understand you got big distributors like uh, Ingram, uh, Baker and Taylor to partner up with you. Um, right. These are, I think, these are like two of the biggest book distributors in the world, if I'm not mistaken, if not the biggest. And they certainly aren't going to just partner up with anyone. What is it about? Reader's Legacy, the concept or the website that caught their attention, kind of like made them want to partner up with you? I think that everybody is seeing the same way. The, the, the fact is that our world has changed forever. It's it's a combination of effects that are occurring right now. The internet, social media, and the like. People, consumers, they don't just want to buy anything anymore. They want to have value added. And now it's gone beyond that. They want an experience. And Reader's Legacy is the culmination of everything that's happening on the Internet and in in the purchasing world today. And I think when our partners, our distribution partners and our IT partners, the folks, the companies we contract with to build the website, when they saw what we were doing, I think they were really easily, really quickly realized that readerslegacy.com wasn't a store. It was an experience. It was an experience that was unrivaled for people who love books. And when people see a vision that has real detail, that is is graphical, that comes to life, it's really easy for them to understand and they want to be a part of it. And I think mm-hmm. our, we're blessed to have the partners we do that are helping us and supporting us to launch the website. And we're very confident that the website is going to be successful. Right, right. Okay, all right. So um, just, uh, I'm just a little curious. Like This is, this is like a really big project. Um, what, what kind of work, just, just for information, what kind of work goes into uh, starting a new social platform such as Reader's Legacy, which I presume it is? Well, the fact is, if, if, if we speak frankly, right. there's probably a, a new social media platform of some site started every day. Okay. There are um, website systems where you can sign up and instantly have your own social media network right. platform, like Ning, Ning.com, N-I-N-G.com. Those are very different than what we're building we're building a website that is built on the same platform as Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn. Okay. It's built on a platform called Python. It's built using the right programmers. We have nine 
uh, people on staff that are all former Dell, IBM employees that are architects, that are programmers, that are Java experts. Right. And there have been over 100,000 lines of code written. And this website is it, the same quality and caliber as Facebook and, right. and the other elite level systems are out there. These types of websites can't be built by average people. They're just way too complicated. They are too time consuming and definitely very costly. We spent over a million dollars building it. Yeah. All right. Oh, wow. That's, uh, that's definitely a lot of work right there. So, uh, Ken, with regards to um, other possible, I don't know, calling competitors or the possible rivals out there on the internet, something like uh, Goodreads, for example, uh, what would make this website different from different from guys like them? I'm glad you asked that. You know, one of the very first people that I um, mentioned this to, that I showed this to, was an expert in the publishing industry named Joe Wickert. And Joe has been around the publishing industry for 20 years. He's been in senior executive roles with many of the biggest pub publishing companies. And now he consults on the industry. He knows the owners of Goodreads personally. He knows the owners of Wattpad personally. And he's even met the owners of Amazon. When Joe looked at our pictures and saw what we were doing, his quote, I think, was probably the most accurate and favorable feedback we had received by the time. And he said, reader's legacy is to Goodreads as Facebook was to MySpace. Mm -hmm. You see, Goodreads is really a, a wonderful website for people who want to provide reviews of the books that they've read. Reader's Legacy is an experience. It's a chance for somebody who loves books right. to create a virtual version of the books that have impacted their lives, the collection. And then even after they've passed, that collection of books, that page, the virtual library will live on. It will become a living legacy. It will become their reader's legacy. Okay. All right. Cool. So it's, this is, yeah, you're talking something really different here from, from what's already out there. Correct. All right. Cool. So um, what would you be your, your ultimate uh, goal, like your ultimate vision for reader's legacy? What would you essentially finally ultimately envision it to be I think readerslegacy.com is going to become a world caliber platform in the publishing industry our plans for the website for the company go far beyond what we're launching in seven days our event the readers legacy choice awards and writers conference is going to become an annual event where elite level authors in the publishing industry are going to be honored and awarded based on their sales on readerslegacy.com, where we're going to have world caliber authors coming in to speak and train. But more than that, I mentioned that Litcoin's credit, that currency that we're launching. Right. We're also at the same time going to be launching a charitable arm of our company where we're going to donate 10% of all of the Litcoins spent on our website, the cash equivalent of that. So if right. there's a million Litcoins retrieved or spent in the first year, then we're going to donate 10% of that, $100,000 to very worthwhile, not-for-profit causes. Right. And, and what people are going to do is they're going to apply to our review panel for funding. Now, maybe it's going to be people that want to take books and help uh, literacy in Africa. Maybe there's going to be people that, you know, recycle old encyclopedias. Maybe there's a, a learning program for um, disabled children in South America. Whatever it is, as long as there's a connection to advancing literacy, we're interested. And the people that we give that money to every year, they're going to be invited to come to our conference and to receive their funding rate right at the conference. We're also going to <coughs> create an incubator program. We're People who have ideas about publishing to make it better, technology ideas, reading ideas, whatever it is, they can come to us, they can come to our event, and we're going to help them to fund those ideas. We're going to advance the publishing industry through this platform. Our mission statement is to change the way people write, read, and experience books. And what wow. we're doing on June 7th is just the start. Cool, cool. So it sounds like really exciting times for you guys over there. It definitely <laughs> is. All right, cool. 
So you mentioned something about the Reader's Legacy Choice Awards. Uh, for the benefit of our listeners who uh, aren't familiar with this with this event, uh, what is it? What's it about? You know, what's uh, like who will be there, and essentially what will be what will be presented there. You know, uh, at the first annual Reader's Legacy Choice Awards and Writers Conference, we are going to be honoring uh, 16 authors who have written an amazing books that have sold incredibly well, world caliber okay. books and authors. But more importantly, we have 16 elite level speakers, authors, and professionals, New York Times bestsellers, Wall Street Journal bestsellers, uh, international bestsellers. And we have over 190 people who have bought tickets to attend the event that want to learn the secrets that these experts know. So it's going to be a writer's conference that's based on helping new authors to create and market saleable books. And it's going to happen every weekend, and and we're really excited about this first one. Every weekend? Wow. Sorry, once once a year. Oh, once a year. Okay. Well, all right, cool. That That sounds like a really really interesting event, a really fun event for a writer. Okay, Ken, so uh, in these last few minutes, I'd just like to ask you uh, just a few questions, uh, you know, kind of like, um, kind of, kind of like to give our, our listeners a bit of a feel about, uh, about, about some, about yourself anyway. Uh, so my first question is, um, given the limitless range of human experiences, like from the very worst to the very best, what experience, profession, or activity, which you have not yet experienced, would you like to experience? That's an interesting question. That you've, uh, you're provoking some crazy radical thoughts there, my friend. <laughs> All right, got that. I want to have an impact on the world. Okay. Um, writing books has changed my life. Uh, more importantly, reading books has changed my life. It's okay. I'm just a kid from Canada. Right. And I, I think that what we're doing is a worthy cause that is going to help millions of people that haven't had the opportunities that I've had in their lives. Right. To give them an opportunity to have those experiences. And I think we're on the right track to do that. I think that it's it's created and invigorated a desire in me to make a difference in the world of books. I see. All right. Cool. So uh, with regards to that question, now let me ask you the inverse of that question. Given the limitless range of human experiences, uh, which experience, profession, or activity which you have not yet experienced is something that you would not like to experience? <laughs> That's interesting. You know, I'm going to turn that on you. Alvin, All right. there, there's nothing that, <laughs> in my mind that I w- would not like to experience. Fantastic. I, I, I'm, I'm 44 years old, and I've right. already been blessed with a range of experiences that people don't experience in five lifetimes. When okay. I was 20 years old, I was in high-speed chases, chasing people on motorcycles that had just robbed banks. When I was 22, right. I was on a SWAT team, kicking in doors and confronting people that were stoned with knives in their hands, threatening to kill me. When I was 26, I was investigating the murders of children, abductions. When I was 28, I was interrogating suspects of major crimes. And now, since 30 years old, I've traveled around the world. I've owned businesses in the mortgage industry, the property management industry, the direct selling industry, the publishing industry. I've sold over 250,000 copies of books. I've met world leaders, and I have an incredible family. I, right. I, I can't think of anything that I I wouldn't want to experience. Okay. All right. I got that. So uh, that, kind of, that may make this last question of mine kind of moot, but I'll ask it anyway. Uh, if you could choose one particular age or age range of your life, you know, like the twen- your 20s, your 40s, uh, I don't know, 58 to 63, uh, past, present, or future, to stay in forever, what age or age range would it be? And why? <laughs> I, I, I can't answer that, Alvin. I'm, All right. Okay. <laughs> I'm, ex- I'm, I'm most excited about the age tomorrow. All right. Cool. I'm, most, that. I'm most excited about what's going to happen to me next year. Look, here, here's what I, I've realized from all of my successes, my, successes, my failures, right. and my experiences. Okay. Everything we learn in our lives is a stepping stone. It's like a pebble in a river. 
and and we it, through our experiences we fill up that river with pebbles and the culmination of all of those pebbles is our experience and we use our experience to make our next days better for our family and ourselves we honor god in the process and we move through that journey and so every day if if you're really in touch with who you are and you really pay attention to your experiences in life then every day can't help but get better because you're being armed through the journey, through your failures, for the next day. And so with the blessings that God's given me, I, I, I am excited about the next day. I wouldn't want to stay in today. I wouldn't want to stay right. in 32 years old. Right. I want to be ready for tomorrow. All right. Cool, cool, fantastic. That's uh, those are that's excellent words, and that's I guess it's excellent advice for anyone to take. Okay, so um, in closing, we're just about out of time here. Um, I the our guest tonight is uh, Ken Dunn. His latest book is Learn How to Write a Book in Two Hours. He's also the founder of Reader's Legacy, which will be launched on June seven. And you can also check him out on uh, some websites, one of which is learnhowtowriteabookin2hours.com. That's all one word. You can also check out his company's website, nextcenturypublishing.com, also one word. And you can also check him out on Facebook as Ken Dunn Author. That's also one word, and Dunn has two ends, Ken Dunn Author. So, uh, Ken, uh, thank you for being in our show. It was great to have you on, and I could really feel the energy and your excitement. It was fantastic. Alvin, thanks a lot for being here, and I'd love to stay in touch with anybody that has been inspired by this. It's really easy to find me. You just have to go to kendunn.org, K-E-N-D-U-N-N dot O-R-G, and, uh, or you can check me out on any social media platform. Uh, it, I really have appreciated the time with you, Elvin, and good luck with your show. Okay, thank you very much.